Well, good morning, guys. Just hitting the trails this morning, and uh, I'm on my way to that spot where I uh, was talking about possibly setting up a camp. I figured it would be a, a good time to see if we can set something up, at least explore some ideas, and uh, have a little lunch. Got a couple of elk steaks with me today, and some uh, some uh, mushroom rice mix. So we're gonna go ahead and get those done, and. Um, and hopefully uh, we can start uh, putting something together for that uh, for that area. But uh, first thing I'll have to do is uh, see if I can uh, find up enough resources uh, to where I could start uh, building some things. See if there's enough around or if I have to uh, start poking around in a different location, dragging materials back. But we'll see. So let's get on over there. So I'm actually on vacation this week, but unfortunately it's already Thursday. Uh, the whole plan was to uh, go on vacation, uh, reset my brain, because I was going a little bit crazy at work, and uh, I needed some time off to get away. And I figured, you know what, the best way to do that is to be coming out here uh, every day, shooting videos for you guys, setting up the camp, and getting relaxed, and getting some good work in, and uh, I would feel a million times better. Sure enough, Monday rolls around, and bam, I get gastro. So, Monday, Tuesday, didn't eat a thing, didn't drink a thing, couldn't get anything down. And then uh, Wednesday, woke up, woke up feeling good, but so depleted from not having any food or water in me or anything in me for a couple of days. And I uh, had spent the whole day rehydrating. So today, we're out. I gotta make sure I stay hydrated. And uh, I gotta pace myself, because I find, uh, you know, after all that, all that uh, hiking coming in here, which is usually uh, not so bad, it's about a 30 minute hike, uh, but getting in here today was, uh, I feel I feel tired. So I'm gonna have to uh, kind of pace myself. But um, first order of business today is we're gonna wanna get rid of this little tree. It is dying up at the top, it's all dead. The whole top part of the tree has fallen off and, uh, and dried up. So I think I'm gonna remove that guy. Well, because it's right in, the, right in the middle of our camp and it's not doing so well. It's kind of sick. See if I can get that. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that or not, but not the healthiest tree on the planet. So we're going to take that guy down. I just want to give you a little uh, look at something kind of simple that I uh, keep in my kit all the time. Uh, it's basically a rope with two bowlines at the end. And uh, I kind of like this. Uh, this one is actually a little bit shorter than I like. Uh, I usually use one a bit bigger. But uh, this little piece of kit here <laughs> does quite a few things for me uh, quite well. Uh, I'm going to use it right now uh, for hanging up my backpack. But uh, I'm going to show you a few other things that I use this for as well. And uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you'll want to carry one of these in your kit too, but uh, this little simple rope does quite a few things. So check it out. So on a day like today, it's uh, poured rain last night and I want to keep my pack and my stuff off the ground so it doesn't get all wet. Um, so basically, you know, you've all seen this before. You pass one loop through the other loop, you attach it to the tree. And a lot of people, they would use, um, uh, you know, a Marlin spike hitch put a stick in between and hang their backpack from that or whatever. And, and that works, but you can also do it this way. Just to show you real quick, start off from the end. We got our bowline line wrapped around the tree. We pass it through, brought it down here. We wrapped it around the Alice frame back up with the bowline. line. We pulled this string through and we put our toggle. Now this is very similar to, very similar to the uh, Marlin spike hitch, although it's not a Marlin spike hitch. The thing I do like about this is that now it is adjustable, so I could slide this stick down, adjust my height if I want it lower, or I could pull it back up to the top and give myself another couple of inches uh, to the top to make it a little higher. So that's one use I use this little uh, rope for. I'll show you another one. 
So sometimes while I'm hitting the trails or I'm walking in and uh, I find a tree's got a nice little bunch of dries on them, I'll uh, take that same cord and I'll put a little bundle on there and I'll attach this to the back of my backpack. So while I'm walking around, going through or whatever it is, I've got this just dangling there. And when I get to my spot, if, uh, if I know that my area or if I don't want to use my area up too much for the resources, I could bring them in from a different spot. And uh, this is just a small bundle, but uh, I could bring in, with this little cord, I could bring in a bundle about this size. So I could really pack this guy up and uh, these will open and that'll come on down. And it's super easy to stuff in. I'll just show you what I do. So basically all I do is I take my, my loop, I pass it through, I make another loop. So there's one, do the exact same thing on the other side. Pass it through, so I've got two and I make them an even size. Then after that, you just grab your handfuls of stuff, pass them on through. So for the last method, I should have brought my billy can or my uh, fish mouth spreaders uh, for my uh, Pathfinder cup uh, to demonstrate this correctly, but uh, I think you'll get the point of it anyway. Um, if you're ever cooking over a fire and uh, you wanna use your billy can or whatever it is, in the same way that we use this, you can set up either a tripod or a, uh, or a stick leaning out <coughs> and you can, um, use one of your sticks here. Here we are, so we got a liter of water in here. It's hanging up here quite nice. Now, if I wanna make it go down closer to the fire, all I do is I grab the stick, slide her down, get her closer to that area. Once it starts boiling and I wanna just keep it warm, you grab on to, the, uh, to your running line and your toggle, and you slide it right back up again. And then you have your little pulley uh, for cooking. It works very good. I don't suggest using bank line for this. Bank line tends to melt, but, um, uh, power cord works just fine. So uh, that's my third method of carrying this little string. And I don't know if there's any more, but I mean, if something ever happens, you could use that for a bow drill string or whatever, and uh, you'd be in business. So there you go, guys. My little magic string. I know this isn't the, uh, the greatest tool in the world. It's not some fancy uh, super ninja bushcrafting tool, but... Uh, <laughs> Anything that's going to make your life a little bit easier is worth keeping around. I've been using this little orange guy for quite a while. You can see the, it's starting to get faded a little bit and, and dirty, but uh, it works out just fine for me. I use it for, for uh, toting wood around and carrying, <coughs> hanging my pack and, uh, and, uh, and cooking with, and it uh, keeps on going, working just fine. Um, I wish I could have brought, I would have brought my, uh, my, my pot hanger and I would have been able to actually cook something with it today. Uh, in that fashion but uh, I, I forgot it but anyway not the end of the world but just keep in mind guys I know something simple like this seems kind of ridiculous to mention but anything that makes your life a little bit easier while you're out in the bush is worth uh, worth talking about so uh, I just wanted to share this with you So I'm preparing to uh, collect some um, some uh, wood for the uh, for the projects I want to do with the camp. Uh, I have uh, harvested some dead wood, and I also have harvested some live wood. Um, I don't particularly like to cut down live trees. I have no reason for it really, <coughs> except for if I'm planning on building something. But uh, when I do do it, I'll show you why I chose these two uh, uh, from this area. You can see right down here. There is one right there, and there was one right there, growing right along this side, the size of this uh, this healthy uh, beech tree. Now, those two guys were gonna struggle along for just about ever, and uh, most likely not make it uh, by competing with this big tree right here. Uh, they're kind of spindly on the way up. They have just leaves up on the top. Everything else was dying up on the way. Uh, so I chose those. Um, if I find any standing deads that are in good shape, I'll definitely use those before I'd use these. Uh, but I didn't find any. And uh, these guys look like they were struggling. And uh, one of them was actually growing right within the roots of uh, this big beach here. So um, I took those two down. 
I cleaned up one. You already saw that. Uh, I'm going to do the other one here. We're going to bring that one back to camp. Uh, and then we're going to start building our bench. Uh, the one thing that we're missing uh, at this camp is a place to sit. And uh, it's time to remedy that. So, so we got our four stumps uh, kind of cut the length. We're basically just going to have to clean up all these little bits. Get those off there so they don't uh, grab you and cut you up, scratch you up. Get rid of those guys. And then we'll take the axe and sharpen a point onto the end and start driving them into the ground. And we'll finish it off with a clove hitch. So either today or tomorrow when I come back with my son, we'll get some lengths to fit from there to there, fill up that part of the bench, and then cut off the excess of those posts and then uh, we'll have our bench ready, uh, at least a place to sit down when we come here, which will be kind of nice. Post fill set, framing's done. All we need to do now is get some pieces to go across the uh, across the ledge here. We'll fill those up, and then we'll have our um, we'll have our bench. Uh, but right now, I'm running out of time. I gotta go pick up my boy at school soon. So uh, we're gonna quickly get a fire done, uh, get some lunch cooking, and then. Uh, if I have time, we'll see if we can find some pieces to put in here. If not, uh, we'll, we'll finish that up tomorrow morning uh, after I come back here with my son. And then uh, there will be some more daddy-son time to, uh, to complete the bench. So um, let's get that fire going. Man, this whole area is soaking wet. I'm not even sure if the birch bark is going to light, but we'll see. If we get the birch to light, if that doesn't work, then I'll pull out a piece of fat wood, but... I think this should should do the trick. There we go. Like a charm. Now hopefully I did my fire prep right because if that's the case then this should just light smoke should blow, blow off all this uh, wet stuff and I should have a nice fire going that I can cook in in a couple of minutes if I did my job right. So we got our fire started started without a problem even though the materials were all wet but it's going good fire prep is key you know make sure your biggest the biggest amount of stuff that you're going to use in the beginning is your smalls and then work your way up slowly at smaller amounts and you end up having uh, no problem at all um, so anyway I'm going to go and throw my elk steaks on there uh, somehow in between my the, the store and here I lost my spices but it doesn't really matter what we're going to do is we're going to put the elk steak on there. Once it's cooked, I'll chop it all up and I'll mix it in with the rice. The rice is spiced anyway, so it should be good. It's um, like a mushroom, uh, like a cream of mushroom rice. Should be good. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So uh, let's get those steaks on the grill. All right, so the steaks are looking pretty nice. Nice little morsels there. And... Rice coming along. 
Hopefully that'll be done soon. Shouldn't be too long. So guys, in case, in case any of you are wondering, the tools I was using today was the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe. Love this axe. Great, holds an edge quite well. I can get it to shaving sharp. Uh, it will need a little bit of work when you first get it to get that, uh, that edge uh, taken care of nicely, but it'll uh, definitely uh, chop anything you need to and you get it shaving sharp, no problem. And it chops pretty decently. It's not the best splitter, but it chops okay. And um, yeah, Carpenter's Axe. Great for carving, by the way. The sheath did fail me today though. Disappointed in that a little bit. Uh, I had the, the sheath on when I was using it to, uh, to pound in those, um, those, uh, the legs for the bench. And it, uh, somehow it just pop, popped off. Don't know what happened, but, uh, kind of sucks, but I'll just have to make another one. It's no big deal. I'll just have to get some steel, get some, uh, leather in and, uh, get that all taken care of. So, carpenter's ass, has Varna. Very good for the money. My Agawa Canyon, uh, buck saw. This, this thing, out of all the saws I've ever used, this thing is the bomb. Nothing touches it. I know there's people talking about silky saws, this and that. And, uh, you know, you, you can only saw a certain way with them. And I know they, they saw great. I've seen them work. But uh, I've also heard of a lot of people breaking the blades because it gets jammed in there and they push forward and it pops. That ain't going to happen with this. This thing is awesome. I've been going with the same blade now for over a year. Still cuts like a, like a beast. No issues at all. Great saw. On my belt, I've got my trusty Triple X Privateer. And I know you guys seen this over and over and over again, and I keep talking all kinds of stuff about it, about how it's the greatest thing on earth. And but I'm not going to say any of that today. But that's what I'm carrying. Beautiful, great knife. And we got the fire started today with the Four Directions Bushcraft uh, Elite. Uh, I mean, the things like uh, you could use this as a self-defense weapon. It's so long, uh, but in uh, really crappy conditions like today, everything was soaking wet. Even the birch bark, when I, you could feel the humidity in it when I was pulling it off. Uh, I don't know how many strikes it took. I didn't really count, but it was like one or two and the fire was lit and uh, it got everything lit hot enough to stay lit. And uh, I really, really recommend these if you're ever looking for a new ferro rod. I don't know if you can see that juiciness in there, but let me tell you, elk is really hard to beat. It's delicious meat. Give a quick look at the rice. Cream of mushroom rice. Gonna be good. So I'm not entirely sure exactly what uh, what uh, what the plan is for this area yet. Uh, I do know that I want to have the uh, the bench set up. The bench is going to be set up so we have a place to sit. Uh, possibly another one even on this side and then um, maybe some kind of uh, lean-to shelter over here I want to keep these two trees open uh, these four trees open for uh, hanging hammocks because it's actually perfect for that we can keep the, uh, the fire pit there we'd have to find some stone though and uh, that's one thing I find difficult around this area is there's almost no stone can't find it anywhere uh, I can't even remember when I was walking around through the trails or even off the trails where I've come across a stone. Everything is like heavy clay and mud. So it's kind of difficult to, uh, to come across uh, some stone, believe it or not. It's a, it's a resource that's uh, highly coveted, I guess. But uh, anyway, we'll look around, see if we can find some stone and uh, frame out a, um, a little fire pit. If not, maybe we can even hike some in. That would suck though, but we'll see. Maybe winter I could pulk it in, that would be all right put it in the sled snowshoes and get it over here but uh, all things considered I like I like this spot <coughs> I really like this spot I think we could do some cool things here let's just set up the cap and have a place to hang out be all right if you guys have any suggestions leave them down in the comments below for me I'd love to hear your thoughts so guys uh, got a good good portion of the bench fixed up uh, everything's pretty looks pretty good. Uh, I was originally gonna take these guys off, but now I'm thinking I might actually just uh, lash a series of uh, of boards up the back and give yourself a little bit of a back a backrest on there too. Not really sure yet what I'll do, but um, everything seems to be holding nice. You should be able to hold two people my size, uh, no problem, nice and sturdy. 
I used a 120-pound um, uh, uh, bank line for that, and I did multiple wraps and a good lashing on there, so it ain't gonna slip. I started it off with a uh, with a um, uh, timber hitch, and I finished it off with a clove hitch. So uh, I don't think it's gonna be going anywhere. Knots should hold up nicely. Uh, if they don't, I'll just take it all apart and redo it, and uh, in, a, in a different way, and make sure that it doesn't come loose ever again. That's all. But uh, so far, so good. So I'm just having a hard time finding these straight poles that everyone seems to find on YouTube. I don't know if it's if it's just because the, this area here has uh, everything growing on these hills and valleys. Uh, this this is a valley that I'm in actually. Um, but I think that's part of the issue is that everything is kind of up and down on hills here. So everything's kind of growing twisted and stupid. Uh, I can't find anything straight. So that's becoming a bit of an issue just to make sure that everything uh, lines up nice and becomes straight and comfortable. But anyway, um, I'll probably come back here. I'm, I'll be back here uh, tomorrow morning with, uh, with Logan. We'll do a little, uh, a little look around camp, see if we can find some more, uh, some more wood that we could use. And then we'll, uh, Come back here and we'll finish off I'll finish off the camp. And uh, can't forget my trusted buddy. Sorry guys, we're all packed up, ready to go. Got to go pick up my boy at school. Uh, kind of disappointed on the progress today. I thought I was going to get farther than I did. Uh, but uh, my body's just not working right yet. I'm not 100%. And uh, I kind of gassed out too quickly. And I keep on having to take breaks. And uh, anyway, it sucks, but it is what it is. That's what happens when you catch a virus. You just got to make sure you uh, you take it easy and get your way back faster. And you'll, you know, you'll be better when you're 100%. Uh, but goals for tomorrow. Uh, in the next video. Um, I will be uh, setting up a tripod. Uh, I'll be out here tomorrow so we can finish this bench off. Uh, and we'll uh, set up a tripod. And then hopefully we'll have uh, two more poles we could set up on a tree over there so I can set up my, uh, my hammock chair. Uh, it's that old uh, budget hammock. I made a chair out of it a while back. And we could set that guy up over there. So we'll have a bench here and we'll have the hammock chair over there. And uh, I can come and go with that as I please and just uh, leave, it, uh, leave the poles up against the tree there. That'll be pretty good. Um, so that'll be a decent start off uh, to the camp. Uh, in winter time when we come snowshoeing around here, this will be a good place to come hang out. Um, we'll just have to start uh, poking around, collecting some good wood, and then uh, we'll be set up for uh, a place to hang out once winter rolls around. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you liked this one. Sorry it wasn't more action-packed, but you guys take care. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Get out and explore. Don't forget.